What's up, my friends? Chrissy Crash here. If you are ready to finally stop struggling with inconsistency and elevate your game on the track, you are in the right place. Uh, if you are watching the recording of this, please comment below with recording so that we know you're watching the recording. Um, if you are someone who's been battling with like lack of consistency, self-doubt, performance plateaus, shaky mindset, then I am very excited for you to meet our two guests today. Uh, you know, I think that for a lot of us, these issues can go pretty deep. And I know for at least one of our guests today, having some of these lack of self-confidence, not sure what to do, like almost resulted in being like, should I play roller derby anymore? Should I not? So when we don't resolve this stuff, it actually ends up hindering our growth. Um, and that's what I don't want for you. I don't want you to feel demotivated, stuck, not able to reach your goals. Um, so I am very, very excited to have these two amazing humans on with us today. Uh, this is Crystal Criddle and Kelly Johnston, uh, two amazing roller derby athletes that have incredible stories. Um, and if you don't know who I am, hi, I'm Chrissy Crash. Uh, I have been helping roller derby athletes for over 15 years level up their game, pass minimum skills, get roster spots, earn MVPs. Uh, and so I'm excited to just share some insights with you today and to share these two amazing, amazing guests with you. Um, so I'll let Crystal, do you wanna go first? Just introduce yourself just a little bit. Sure, my name is Crystal Criddle. Um, my derby name is Mocha Muscles. Um, I started in March, 2017, which seems like thousands of years ago, it was actually because my sister-in-law had played derby in Texas years ago, and she said how fun it was and this and that, and I bumped into a league at a um, this festival um, near my home, and they were like, all ages, will train, doesn't matter if you ever on skates, or it's been 30 years since you were on skates, and I was like, even if I'm a mother? <laughs> so... I decided to give it a shot and the rest is history even through COVID I'm still here <laughs> hey nice and then go for it Kelly uh hello I'm Kelly Johnston otherwise known in the derby world as pew pew um I started <laughs> skating <laughs> I started skating in uh in May of 2022 um Kind of hit rock bottom, needed something, found something, fell in love with it and buried myself in it mm -hmm. uh, for about a year. Uh, didn't make the team, which was a, a huge hit, but ultimately, I think, is kind of what led me here. Uh, after that, I uh, threw myself into park skating and broke my leg and was out for uh, almost almost a year dealing with that now and uh, just decided to get back into it and to find a better way of living and a better way of doing derby and have been pleased with uh, with being part of this program and the the changes that have happened within me. Awesome, awesome. So let's talk a little bit about this, my friends. Let's talk about up-leveling our roller derby game and what that's been like for you. Um, let's talk about where you guys got stuck first. Like, let's paint the picture a little bit of the spot that you were at when you got stuck. Crystal, I know for you, and please fill in, like you kind of got to this point where you're like, oh, should I be doing this? Am I, am I too old for this? Like, what was it like for you? Like, where were you at with that point where right before you started leveling things up? Yeah, I think for me, it was definitely age. Um, our team is the whole gambit. I mean, our youngest team member, I think is 25 all the way to 50 four and mm -hmm. I'm on the closer to the other end but um I was just feeling like okay I'm athletic but can I do this I don't know if I can do this that's different than just going to the gym and um I was kind of at a, 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 a past a point in time and my husband was like mm, maybe you should try something else and I was like mm. so I on probably Instagram I found your program and Another teammate of mine um, knew of your program. Um, and I was like, hey, I'll give it a shot. She said, 12 weeks, level up your game. And I kind of knew I was a jammer. I just kind of just levitated towards that. And I was like, okay, I think I can do this. Um, and that year I got um, MVP jammer. And then a couple scrimmages, I got MVP jammer and just have been riding the wave ever since. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. It's amazing what can happen like with a few key 
switches that we're going to talk about today that can make a, a really big difference. Kelly, what about you? Like paint the picture. Like where were you when you were feeling stuck before you started to level up? Uh, I was feeling stuck a lot with my consistency with when it, especially when it came to nutrition, um, mm -hmm. that I think led to part of my leg breaking was I wasn't properly fueling my body for what I was asking of it. Um, mm -hmm. so, so getting that kind of attention towards my nutrition has been pivotal. The mindset training overall is the most important for me. I was, not in the right headspace before. And now I'm, I'm leading with a place of gratitude and joy. And that that's kind of changed everything for me. Awesome. Awesome. And so based off of like what you guys have shared with me, we sort of figured that there were kind of like five key pieces that made the biggest difference for you in up leveling your game. And so for everyone that's listening, I want you to listen to these from a standpoint of, am I missing all five of these? Is there maybe one or two of these that are like the, the, the one or two numbers on the combination lock that need to be um, turned and, and, and put in the right place so that you can just unleash the whole thing? Um, the first thing that both of you guys said was accountability, like sticking to a plan, um, having someone to hold you accountable. So what was that like for you? How did accountability really impact you in up-leveling your game? Um, for me, I think it was just knowing someone was watching what I was doing, but in a nice way, <laughs> uh, you know, like having to do the food. Um, I, I kind of always ate pretty good, but like knowing the calories, knowing the protein, because I know for vegetarian, for me, I was like, well, I just won't eat meat. Let's call it a day. And I was like, oh, <laughs> no. And like, and like you were saying, you got to feel what I'm asking my body to do on the track. I, I needed more protein. That was that was one of my things. So that was handy to be able to see it and like, oh, the macros and micros, this, that, and the other. And mm -hmm. I have been doing it still off and on um, and probably will for the rest of my life just to, just nice. to do it. Um, and then, you know, meeting group with a group weekly from ladies from all over the world um, that were in Derby, weren't in Derby, used to be in Derby, trying to get in Derby, um, and having one-on-ones with you all, it just gave me just people to kind of bounce ideas off, bounce, you know, mm -hmm. know where my headspace was, know that I'm not going crazy. Um, and someone to maybe check, you know, on the side, someone, I was buddied up with someone to check on me and say, hey, are you logging those snacks? Are you doing this? Are you doing that? Mm -hmm. And that was really, and someone I, I think who I was buddied with, she lives in Alaska. Like who would have knew, you know? So it was um, in all directions but just handy and supportive and 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 just nice just nice yeah, yeah. i remember crystal i remember yeah. when you first started crash course and you were like oh my god protein <laughs> like, you guys, like... protein protein <laughs> the concept of protein like changed crystal's game it was it was possibly yes, one you, of the everybody favorite, needs it everybody favorite coaching <laughs> moments is crystal's aha moments around protein Kelly, what about you? How was the accountability? Like, how did that help you level up your game? Uh, accountability, again, with the nutrition, being a vegetarian, too. I didn't think I was getting enough protein, but as I've gotten a little bit better at logging my food correctly, I'm seeing that protein wise, I, I am I'm getting I'm pretty spot on with that. So I feel pretty good about that. So having that accountability, having the community, the community has been a game changer for me too. just having seeing their posts and their wins is it helps keep me motivated and keeps me accountable. I'm like, well, I want to post my sweaty selfie mm -hmm. too. And you know, mm -hmm. it, it, it's fun. It's, it, it's a community that is very understanding, very encouraging. And I, I just mm -hmm. having that, that kind of accountability. And then with my coach checking in on me and making sure I'm mm -hmm. staying on track and everybody within the, within the crash course team has just been pivotal towards my success so far and my continued awesome. success moving forward. Awesome. Cool. So we've touched, we've actually touched on two of the five. Great, great work, everyone. Um, so two of those five being accountability and being community. Um, so for those of you guys that are listening, like my question for you is like outside of Derby practice, who's holding you accountable? I think for a lot of people, this is one of the secret sauce pieces, because if you don't have someone that's holding you accountable, it's so easy for half a season to slip by and nothing to have happened. It's so easy to think, like pretend you're being consistent, but not actually being consistent because there's no one checking in on you. So are you eating well? 
the majority of the time. Are you actually getting in your workouts or are you blowing the stuff off? So the accountability piece for sure for leveling up and then community also, right? Like, and you guys have both said it and it's so true. Like who are your biggest cheerleaders? You know, if you're listening to this, who are the people that are cheering you on? Yes, you have these people inside of the program, but outside of that, like who's lifting you up? Who's holding you to a higher standard? Who's going, hey, don't worry. Like I had a weird week this week too, right? I think Crystal said it was like, you you realize from all the people around you that like, like you're not the only one, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you want to level up your game, you have to get really, really real on are you executing the things that you need to be executing? They've both said nutrition was a huge piece of it and the accountability around are you actually tracking your food? Do you know that you're getting what you need? Um, and then the community of like, who's cheering you on when you're struggling? Cool. So we got two. Um, the third one then is overcoming setbacks and developing resilience. So what were some setbacks that you guys had to overcome? and get through in order to get where you are right now? Well, I would say with me, um, maybe past injuries, you know, like Mm -hmm. I've always been athletic, but I'm not coming to this game as a 21 year old, you know? And so there was always, and that was going back to when I was at this moment of stay or go, um, but knowing that, you know what? (laughs) I think everyone on our team, age not even doesn't even matter, has aches, has pains, has whole injuries that maybe happen in derby, maybe happen in another sport. Um, mm-hmm. Being able to nurse them in a good way and and not be try and be beast so much that you re-injure yourself because derby is not going anywhere and people mm-hmm. are understanding. Um, and we're not all. Um, you know, having played for this rec league, we're not just like seniors in high school doing our after school sports. We're mothers, we're wives, we're divorced women, we're all these other things. And then we're coming to this on a couple of nights a week and some weekends. So we're juggling a lot of things. And, you know, that's the beauty of being on a team like this. We all know that we're juggling all these things too. Yeah. So um, it's, it's handy in that way. It's handy mm-hmm. for that. Yep, hundred percent. What about you, Kelly? Um, overcoming setbacks has always been a running theme in my life, especially with with injuries. But for these past twelve weeks, um, I had some you know personal relationship setbacks that almost threw me completely off track. Um, so having that accountability and having that team around me to support me, give me perspective keep me on my path. Shout out Coach Slay. She was my little lifesaver. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it helped me balance my, you know, progress over perfection. Um, Mm -hmm. Even if in Mm -hmm. the midst of my struggles, just making small things every day, they might not be huge, but they add up over time. Um, One of my other biggest setback or like overcoming a setback was my fear of scrimmaging, Mm -hmm. Um, especially coming back from a serious injury. I was terrified. So again, having that community to say, Hey guys, I'm scared. Just to mm-hmm. being able to say that somewhere in a safe safe space, I'm going to start crying. Um, but okay. to have them say, you know, I've been through this. This is what mm-hmm. I did. This is what worked for me. It changed everything. And I went out there and scrimmaged and I got a scrimmage tonight. And uh, every every time it's just getting easier and I'm getting stronger and stronger. So, again, going back to that community. Huge. Awesome. Awesome. Mm-hmm. So if we, for people that are like listening if they are over, if they're hitting setbacks, if they're hitting challenges, what would be like your, you know, number one thing that you would do or you would recommend that they do if they're coming up against some kind of a challenge? Reach out, find, find your community, find your people, find your people. Mm -hmm. Don't do it alone. Don't do it alone. As they say, nobody is an island. And even within the team, you can feel like that at times. You can feel like, I'm the only one that did this to their hamstring. Nope, you're not. So (laughs) um, reaching out on on that personal level too. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Being vulnerable. Being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's so huge, right? Because like when you really share like, hey, I'm hitting this challenge right now. There's inevitably people around you that are in the same spot. Right. And I think sometimes even just realizing that you're not coming up against something alone. I'm not the only one that's nervous for sh- for sh- my first scrimmage. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm not the only one that's like worried about like re-injuring this old injury. Like even just that little bit like helps 
helps us to gain confidence and gain courage because we see other people doing it in spite of it. I love it. Awesome. And oh, I want to add one more thing. Yeah. And even um, when you've been in it a few years and you think you should be this like hardcore, I don't get, I don't get scared and I don't get nervous. You should, you again, going to back, going back to being vulnerable. Like I've been doing this since 2017 and I get like nervous. Like it's the first time and other people do too. It's not like a, well, you're a vet. You shouldn't be nervous at any time, you know, like even vets get nervous too. Like we're going on a roller coaster. So that, mm -hmm. you know, just something like that. Yeah. And how cool is that for newer skaters? You know what I mean? Like oh, yeah. if every vet that was nervous was willing to say it, like how incredible would that be for like an entire team to be able to know like, oh, this like gives me permission to have the courage to skate, even though I'm mm -hmm. scared because mm -hmm. this person do is doing it too not oh i have to be totally ready and not nervous in order to try mm -hmm. something right yeah 100 like i say do it do it scared just do it scared yeah. do it scared <laughs> do it scared yeah. all right so coming up on the last two so number four uh mindset training so over the course of, you know, this process that you've gone through with crash course of like leveling up your game, are there any specific mindset tactics, mantras, principles? Is there anything that like stuck with you that if someone is working on leveling up their game, that if they could just take that one nugget and like keep it in their brain, um, or if they could just have that one little thing, like what was something that made a difference for you? I think for me, it was finding those books and those um, podcasts, because before, you know, you go to the library and you see self-help here and there and the other, but I know you had a, a, a resource book. And I think the first book I read was something with habit and atomic habits, power, atomic, habits. Power, atomic habits or power of yeah. habit, atomic habits, atomic habits. And it just gave me, you know, when you're trying to start a good habit, how you tack it on to, you know, a habit you already have and just ways to continually push yourself, support yourself, mm -hmm. um, have it, whether it's having a post-it on my mirror. Um, I got another book with that, or no, I got a calendar, Badass, the Badass in You or something, like a page a day calendar. <laughs> So all the little things that you suggested, you know, you, that's where you find when you, you're looking at other people's suggestions, like, okay, I think I'll take that. And I think I'll take that. And that works for me. Um, for not just Derby, but life. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And I know for you, Crystal, maybe you can speak on this a little bit. Um, so Crystal's gone through Crash Course and Transformation, which is the phase one program, then into Thrive, which is the phase two program. And now is an MVP, which is the phase three program. And I remember at the beginning of Thrive, the concept of integrity for you was a big one. Yes. Do you remember being, this? Of like being about it. Yeah. Do, yeah. Doing, doing what you say you're going to do, being about it. Don't just talk yeah. about it, be about it, you know? Yeah. And it's a habit too. It's not like, poof, one day I have integrity. It's a skill. It's a muscle you have to read up on, talk about, think about, journal about, um, but it can drive you day to day. It's just, but it's something you yeah. have to sort of live, start to live day to day. Yep. Yeah. 100%, 100%. And then Kelly, Kelly finishing up phase two, phase one of Crash Course right yep. now. It's been, it's been yep. a roller coaster. What, <laughs> what are some mindset pieces that have really stuck with you? Um, I'm going to piggyback a little bit on Crystal too, is having those, like I, I did, I went out my calendars right above me. I bought one of those calendars with those cheesy motivational quotes, but guess what? <laughs> the first thing I see when I walk into my bathroom is that calendar. And it works. If you do something repetitively over and over and over again, the change will happen. So having, having visual reminders are, are key for me. Uh, consistency, it, it, it's just like anything in life. If, if you keep doing it over and over and over again, you're, you're going to build that muscle memory. Um, so I'm trying to grow my brain in a positive way. So every day I make sure I listen to one of your podcasts. I listen to something to keep me grounded and keep me focused on the goals that I have. So life doesn't derail me because life has a way of trying to do that to me so and to everyone really so just having visual reminders has always been key for me and consistency and having that accountability is keeping me consistent it all wraps up together <laughs> man it all that's you know what kelly thank you for saying that it's so true so much of this stuff pings off of each other 
right? Mm -hmm. Like the mindset is tied into staying accountable, isn't tied into how you're going to overcome setbacks, is tied into leaning on the community. And it does, it, it all really comes together. And I'm sure some of you signed up for this thinking that we were going to talk about like, you should do these exercises or whatever. <laughs> but like this, they're both giggling because they know this stuff goes, it's so much deeper than that. Like if you want to become an athlete, this is the stuff that has to be in place before the lunges even matter, before the jump squats even matter. Like if you can't create courage and consistency through mindset training and overcoming setbacks, I don't care how many fitness apps you own, you're never, you're never going to use them. You're never going to do any of it because the consistency comes from what you guys are talking about. The consistency comes from keeping the mind in the right place. The consistency comes from building the habits. I love it. And then the last one that you guys said was coaching, surrounding yourself with coaches, not just like community, not just people doing what you're doing, but how has it been? What, what was it about having like coaches? What was it about having like crash course coaches? What was it about having like someone outside of your team? What was it about that that helped you level up your game so much? So have like you just said, having someone outside of my team that just met me, wasn't playing with me, but knew the game, knew all the circumstances, knew all the things that could happen, knew it, knew the team, knew the sport, knew the team, and knew all the stuff that could happen around a derby team um, that went through it before. Again, it goes back to accountability. Mm -hmm. um, got to be a people person. You got some good people. Got to be good peoples. <laughs> um, and and having this where, especially coming out of COVID and like we're all over the world, having this accessible through Zoom and the phone and I don't have to report somewhere like practice every Thursday night or Wednesday night, it makes it easier just to connect because we all have a, a thousand other things where we got to get in the car and go do. So the accessibility in, in, with this program, which, you know, a lot of programs do now just because we came out of COVID, um, but it, that's, that's been helpful, really helpful. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. What about you, Kelly? Um, for starters, it was just providing a solid, ba solid base for me, a solid mm -hmm. expectation that, look, this is what we're looking for. This is where you're kind of going to start. So having that basically not somebody tell me what to do, but some, somebody tell me what to do. Like I've been doing life for 44 years, almost 45 years, and I haven't been doing it right. And I want to do it right. So having that mm -hmm. person that says, Hey, this is the groundwork. If you stick with it, you will get to where you want to go. And then having somebody that can kind of calm my storm and help me, mm. help me see things from a different perspective when I get a little chaotic um, has mm -hmm. been very instrumental. Um, yeah. Coach Slay, Coach Slay bailed me out a few times from my own self and I'm forever grateful to, to have her as my coach. Yeah. We One love my coaches. We love her. We love Coach Slay. <laughs> Awesome. We love you too, Sin. Coach Sin also for the win. <laughs> but yeah, it's so true, right? And I think I love what you said, Kelly, is like, sometimes just having someone that's going to save you from yourself in those moments is so important. And I hear from a lot of our skaters that like, they, they never know how much like they can really lean on like their coaches at practice, because they're not like, paid they're there they're like volunteers you know what I mean but it's like when you have this person that you know like I this person has been hired to keep me and my ship together like there's something about that you can mm -hmm. just go to that person and be like hey yeah. everything's burning down right now and I really need some help yeah there's but a safety in it for some reason a safety in the yeah. in the anonymity of not being in my day-to-day -day life but actually mm -hmm. being in my day-to-day -day life yeah. <laughs> from afar <laughs> From, from afar. afar. <laughs> right? Sometimes it's nice with someone that doesn't know you that well. It's not your significant other. <laughs> yeah. Oh, awesome. So I want to know from each of you, um, what is your next, what is your next up level look like? Let's call it the next six months. Let's give it, let's put a time limit on it. I love that you both took a sigh at the exact same time. <laughs> Literally simultaneous sighs. Oh. If we're talking about up leveling from where you are now, right, to where you want to go, what does up leveling look like for you? It could be on the track or off the track. We talk about this a lot inside of Crash Course. We will hold you to your goals. And now it's recorded. Oh, yeah. Um. I guess I have one, I, I have one for each. Um, 
I've got to put my foot deeper in the blocker land, not just my toe. I seriously, because I said that in January and I've been, my coach has been, my coach has been like, you know, we lost some people on our team, just a side story. We've been lost some people off our team. And so I've been kind of scuttled in the jammer world still. And I don't mind because it's my comfortable place, but I really need to put my foot more in. <laughs> and I'm going to keep saying that only because it's not that I failed. It's just something I just got to come back to. I'm not going to say I failed. It's just, you know, it's, it's the one, it's that thing I'm still working on. You, mm -hmm. I got to do it fearful. I got to courage. I got to do it while I'm still fearful of it, you know? Yep. And then, um, wait, let's hold up on that one. So what's that going to look like for you then? So if you're so that we can like tangible, like, how are you going to know that you wanted this? How are you going to check it off? Is this like, <laughs> is this like blocking one jam per practice? What is it? You know, what does this I, look like? So you can fill us in on it when you've completed it in the next each day. Okay, each that's, practice. that's very tangible. Every practice or every like time we scrimmage block mm -hmm. at least like two times. I mean, that's so doable. That's a yeah. real baby step that I could up to three easily but I could, if I start mm -hmm. with two then I'd be like I can do two I can do three yeah. you know so maybe just like two times yeah what if what if this month it was, what if this month it was like two times for practice and then next mm -hmm. month it was like three times for practice I could do that I like that yeah all right what was your what was your other one um outside of derby um just going to the doctor and being more aware of what's going on with me in this phase of my life um mm -hmm. you know going through menopause and all that is is more than just no period because i thought oh no period yay oh no it's so much more and women a lot of times doctors don't aren't even educated in med school on it so i've had to do my own little research and found a couple books um and looking into some things that that ultimately probably are affecting me in derby because all of this what's going on here is going to affect any sport any anything i do out there you know what i mean yep so um really seriously in the next going into summer looking at that and and seeing how that can just make me be a better person all around mm -hmm. um towards the end of the year awesome what's your next smallest step with that what's one thing if you checked it off with that, whether it's finishing a certain book, whether it's making a doctor's appointment, what's one check off? Um, making a doctor's appointment. Well, I made I made one for literally next week. Um, okay. go, so going to my doctor and um, just really asking some more questions because before I was just like, oh, no period, yay. Now I have some more serious questions, you know, relating to, um, you know, I've had two kids and some other things. So I'm going to be more informed. I know that moving forward mm -hmm. and every woman should be basically yep. 100 percent, 100 percent. in two weeks by the way on the crash course and transformation page we'll be doing balancing your female hormones oh okay i have to tune yeah. in yeah mark your calendar it should be i believe don't don't quote me on this but i believe it's at 1 30 mountain time 2 30 central 2 30. yeah okay if you're listening to this, I'm sorry you don't have access to this if, unless you're in Crash Course and Transformation, but you could be in two weeks. There's a link to apply <laughs> inside. There's a link to apply in this post. Apply. <laughs> apply. <laughs> Kelly, what about you? What's your on skates, off skates? Uh, on skates, um, I want to, I'm, I'm building back uh, this, this, this broken leg, starting to trust it more, uh, desperately want to get my endurance back up, uh, as primarily a jammer, I I really want to be able to run a two minute jam without my legs giving out. So getting my endurance back under me and uh, trusting my my little leg, as I call it. So awesome. That's my that's awesome. my biggest and, thing. And so for you, check offable things. So when we talk in Crash Course, we talk about action based goals and results based goals. So an action based goal is going to be getting the endurance up. So, res or sorry, results-based goal would be getting the endurance up. So action-based goals, what are you doing on a weekly basis? What's that going to look like for you on a weekly basis? 12-mile uh, trail skate once a week. Boom. Love it. Perfect. And I know we'll have some other good workouts for you also. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's plenty <laughs> mixed in there. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. about uh, off-skates? Life stuff. Off-skates? Um, you know, I, I really want to work on being – 
and being more grateful for mm. what my body has done up until this point and, and loving where it's at and not judging myself so harshly on what I used to be instead of mm -hmm. just really being appreciative of where I am right now. And as somebody who's perimenopausal, um, dealing with those changes and seeing a doctor, I have an appointment on the 21st. So, Great. you know, making sure I understand what's going on with my body and, and what it needs moving forward. And uh, so, yeah, just really, uh, really focusing on me and what I need to do to love myself. Yeah, I love that. I love that because I think that gratitude is like one of those meta habits. Like the more that we can practice habitually practicing gratitude, the better our lives tends to get. Like the more that we're focusing on what we're grateful for versus what we don't have, the more that we're f focusing on what we can do than what we can't do. It just, it's like everything else rises around it. I love that for you. Awesome. Awesome. For those of you, for those of you guys that are listening, I challenge you to ask yourself, what does up leveling look like for you in the next six months on the track, off the track? Hopefully these have been some really good examples of that from these two incredible humans. Um, and if you use what, what I'm teaching you here, you can get there, right? If you focus on creating some kind of accountability, learning how to overcome setbacks by being vulnerable, surrounding yourself with a community, elevating your mindset, um, and then getting some kind of coaching from someone who knows how to get you there. These are the things that over time are going to help you level up your game. So you can do it on your own. If you want to get there faster, I will drop a link in the in the show notes um so that you can join us for a free strategy session coach pam will open up some times if you want to just talk about what are your goals where are you getting stuck we'll put together a roadmap on how to get there um, so if you want to get there faster make it easier on yourself i'm sure that these two ladies are can attest to the fact that it just it just makes it easier when you have a little bit of help so with that being said First of all, Kelly and Crystal, thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day to come on and share with everybody. Um, working with the two of you has been an absolute joy. And um, mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm so grateful to get to be a part of watching you both grow. It's so incredible. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for everything thank you for everything and like i'm stealing crystal again if you be about it you know just be about be it, about it. Yep. Yep. be about be it yeah be about it i love it awesome well remember my friends <laughs> life life is a contact sport she who touches the most lives wins so if you have anyone that you feel like needed to hear this message please share a link with them whether it's to the facebook live whether it's to the podcast um, I feel like these two both brought so much awesomeness that I think is really, really helpful for a lot of skaters to hear, whether at the beginning or the end of their journey. So thanks so much. We'll see you later. Thank you.